Hello everyone and welcome to the another video tutorial for Energy Bar Toolkit. In this video I would like to present you everything you should know about Yugui Field Renderer. Let's begin! Let's start with an empty scene. Then add a new canvas by clicking on Game Object, UI, Canvas. And now you have your scene prepared. Choose Tools, Energy Bar Toolkit, Yugui, Create Field Bar. Our Yugui Field Bar appeared and now I will guide you throughout its inspector. Let's take a closer look. Energy Bar Script is a script where you can change your bar current value and also set up its minimal and maximal values. In order to make things easier, the inspector of Energy Bar Renderer is split into four different sections. The Textures section is a place where you can set up your bar textures. As you can see, there already are some example textures added that are bundled with the Energy Bar Toolkit asset. In most cases, you will replace them and customize a look and feel of your bar. I will leave those, but let me change our foreground texture color. You can believe it or not, but you can put as many background and foreground sprites as you want. Just click the Add and drag the texture you have prepared. If you have more of them, you can change their drawing order just by dragging. See? If you want to remove texture, just select it right here and press the minus sign. Next, there is the appearance section where you can better customize the look and feel of your bar. Set native size is an option that will resize your bar to its native size based on used sprites. Bar color type will colorize your bar with a solid color or you can make it gradient. We have set a solid color and it looks good, but let me show you how you can make it different. Choose the slider and pick a color you want for 0% value and do the same for 100% value. To make it look more colorful, add one more color. To do this, click under our color picker and make sure that this new color point will have a desired value. I want to put it exactly in the middle, so I will set the location to 15%. Now choose the third color. To check how it will look like, just change value current right here. It looks nice, doesn't it? Now in the grow direction, you can choose a fill-in effect. You can make your bar grow in one of four directions, left to right, right to left, bottom to top, top to bottom, radial CW, Radial CCW, Expand Horizontal, Expand Vertical, Color Change. When you choose Radial CW or Radial CCW, two sliders will appear. The first one, Offset, will set a filling starting angle. 1.0 means one full rotation. Length is an angular length of fill, so if you don't want to fill the full circle, then you may want to play with this setting. Radial CCW is working the same as Radial CW, but in the opposite direction. CW stands for clockwise rotation, CCW for counterclockwise. Color change will change only the color of the bar. This may be useful for damage controls that are going red when a part of your vehicle is damaged. Bar Scale changes the scale of our bar texture relatively to its original size. Bar Offset will move the bar texture relatively to its origin position. Label Field allows you to display a bar value label on top or somewhere close to your bar. It needs the Yugui text object in order to work. Let's create it now. Just invoke Create UI Text and the new text object is now created. Change its size to 24 because it's too small right now and you may change its alignment to center. Just remember that sometimes your text object may stop displaying text. This usually means that your font size is too big and the rendered text cannot be fit in those bounds. In case when this happens, just make your text object bigger. Ok, so drag your text to the label field of our bar. It's a good practice to make your text a child of our field bar to make it move whenever the bar object moves. Here's the label format. Use it to make your bar display values as you'd like. 
The help message underneath will help you choose a correct format. Now I will show you how to display the bar value percentage as an example. As you can see here, to display a percentage value, our format has to be like this example. Add the percent sign here, here and remove the rest. The third section is the effects section where you have the access to the variety of visual effects. All of those effects will work only in the play mode and I will show you how to each one of them works. The smooth effect will make your bar value change really smoothly. I'll check it and let's see how it works. You can also change the speed and direction of this effect. You want to make it smooth when the value is decreased, increased or maybe both. It's your choice. Unfinished specifies an object that message should be sent to when the smooth effect finishes its animation. After assigning the object you will be able to specify the method name as well. Ok, the next effect is the burn effect. This effect is similar to the smooth effect but displays the bar shadow like this. This effect has also speed and direction options. The blink effect makes the bar blink when a certain value has been reached. You can use it for example when you want the player to pay extra attention when his bar value is really low. Here you can set the color of blinking, blinking rate per second and the value. Operator will make your bar blinking when its value is less than, less or equal, greater than and greater or equal than the value set underneath. Let me show you. I will set my operator to less than and the value to 0.2. The bar will blink only when your bar value will drop under 20%. In most cases your blinking color will be set to transparent to make it appear and disappear respectively, but you may do it however you want. The next effect is tilt effect. This effect utilizes both texture tilling and animation at the same time. In the sprite field I will put an example stripe texture. You can change its color here. And you can also change the options such as tilling that repeats the factor of this sprite, start offset, this is a texture offset on the first animation frame and speed that changes speed of the offset parameter over time. The last effect is the follow effect that can make any game object follow the bar edge. Let me show you. Click on create, UI and image. The example texture I will use is this flare placed in energy bar toolkit example textures flare. Select our image object and drag flare texture into the source image field. I will click on set native size to make it better match other image sizes. Ok, now it has to be set as the follow object in our bar. Drag it into the game object field and see that it is now attached to the edge of our bar and moves when the current value is changing. It's not that eye catching but let me handle it. Slide down to our follow option and choose one of the rotation options. You can make your own rotation curve but I will choose the predefined one. Go back to our energy bar script and change the current value to see what has changed. I'm telling you this is quite an interesting effect isn't it? I'd like to change one more thing. As you can see our flare is visible all the time. I want it to fade out at the both edges of our bar, so what I'll do is to go down to the color field and click on it. Sliders under color picker are responsible for picking a color and it's quite clear what it does. Sliders above are used to change the alpha value and this is what I need to achieve the fade out effect. Click on the left slider and change the alpha value to 0. Do the same with the right slider. Now our flare is gone but add one point in the middle and change its alpha to 255. 
You can also try to change our flare scale parameter in any axis you want. Now I will check all the effects and we will see what we have accomplished with our bar. Press the play button and try changing the bar value to see the final effect. Nice, and this is what I'm talking about. Hope you've enjoyed it and a lot of your questions have been answered. See you in the next video.